the the power of cryptography right makes it exponentially more difficult to break the rule yeah. or, or or to corrupt the system than to enforce the rule and you know the power of sha 256 hashing makes it exponentially more expensive uh to interrupt the network yeah. than than to engage with the network you know the way it was built and uh because the protocol is conservative it's exponentially harder for someone to store their money in a different asset or for a different asset to compete eventually all the other assets go to zero against Bitcoin because they're not conservative. Bitcoin's market capitalization rose 50% on Monday after news broke of the world's largest asset management firm BlackRock filing a new Bitcoin exchange traded fund ETF this coming Thursday. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust also saw a 12% bump after the BlackRock news surfaced. It's been a busy spring for Bitcoin after largely recovering from the broad market collapse following the FTX debacle at the start of the year and with the explosive popularity of ordinals. But the overall cryptocurrency market has otherwise slumped thanks to recent actions by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission towards giant cryptocurrency exchanges Binance and Coinbase. Still, the news of BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF has revived hope that a Bitcoin ETF will finally be approved. While the upward momentum of Bitcoin may be a cause for celebration for some, it is nowhere near the all-time high of $68,789 which the digital asset hit on November 10, 2021. In today's video, Michael Saylor discusses the role of Bitcoin in curbing violence. He also talks about how to securely hold your Bitcoin and also the nature of the various Bitcoin custodians, stating that the only custodian worth trusting your Bitcoin to is yourself. Let us now go into the video and listen to what Saylor has to say. And also don't forget to like this video, subscribe and drop your comments. All analog property can be confiscated, seized, either by violence or by corruption. So the, so analog properties encourage corruption, they encourage violence, either state-sanctioned violence or criminal violence, and they encourage politics and legal manipulation to steal your property or confiscate it one way or the other. And that's been the case for all of human history. So... To the extent that you convert property into a digital form, and that digital form can manifest itself on a hardware wallet or a seed phrase plate or in your head, however it's manifested, you now, you now have the ability to destroy the property by destroying the information. Yeah. Which you can't do with analog property. If you, if you own a vault of gold, yeah. In fact, you can't destroy it. So if you owned a building or a company or even a bunch of bonds, you know, to give you a claim on a government, you can't destroy them by destroying the information. Eventually, a custodian or a government can reclaim them. So in that sense, the human doesn't really have the power over their own property. They don't have the property right. They have a conditional property right based upon their political standing or their physical strength. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin gives the human being an unconditional property right because the power to, to destroy something is the ownership of the something. It's a line yeah. from Dune, by the way, if you remember oh. Frank Herbert, where they oh, yeah. talk about the spice and they say the oh, yeah. power to destroy the spice is, is power over the spice. In this case, um, the power to destroy the property means you have an unfettered right to the property. The power to transport or convey the property is another right. All these other properties, you don't have the right to convey and you don't have the right, uh, you don't have the power to convey or the power to destroy. So I think Bitcoin is a breakthrough in those two ways. The third way it's a breakthrough is, is it's immortal property. You can, in theory, accumulate a massive amount of property and find a way to convey it 10,000 years into the future. You can't do that with even a pyramid. You can't do it with a building. You can't do it with any stock or bond or piece of land. But, you know, you can entrust the Bitcoin to an AI program, put it on a satellite, maybe time lock it. Yeah. yeah. And 
it'll still be there. So I think the the implication of that is that in a world of digital property, there's an ins- there's a disincentive to violence and a disincentive to corruption for lots of reasons. Um, there's always an incentive to negotiation because you're uh, you know you're negotiating to get some instead of none. Yeah. If you don't know how much someone has, then that, that shifts the balance of power in favor of the property owner. Yeah. If you did know how, if I knew you had a hundred Bitcoin and I had a gun to your head, you know, we still end up with a, you know, uh, a game theory that suggests I'll get half, but not all. Because if I pull the trigger, I get none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the game and theory so is 50%. And so if we split it 50-50, yeah. Yeah. you might well give me half or give me a fraction. Yeah. If I'm not using a gun, but I'm just threatening a lawsuit, maybe I'll just take the 10%. Same thing. Now... <laughs> You can shift the balance of power on that because if I have a gun to your head, but you have the ability to to transfer the Bitcoin telepathically, or or you have a little device, a kill switch in your hand, and you can punch the button and transfer it to someone else, somewhere time else, it. time lock it. <laughs> it's like, okay, can I pull the trigger before you push the black switch? In that case, maybe I'd only just take ten percent. Yeah. So, right, so, so I think that there's technology that can be constructed that, that at this point will shift the balance of power away from the authoritarian with, with the physical power and put it in the hands of, um, of the person with the digital power. According to Saylor, the nature of the custodian is very important in relation to the asset being stored. The nature of meaning, the location of the custodian, and the privileges the custodian allows its customers to enjoy. For example, Coinbase is listed as the Bitcoin custodian for the proposed BlackRock ETF. BlackRock has an existing strategic partnership with Coinbase. The companies announced last year that Aladdin, BlackRock's institutional investment platform, would be connected to Coinbase Prime for crypto trading and custody. Let us get back into the video as Sailor drops more details on the custodians. I don't think... um... There's any black and white here. I think that an individual could decide to be their own custodian or could engage in multi-sig. A family could decide to be their own custodian or engage in multi-sig. A small company, a big company, a city, a state, a country, they could all make different decisions. And the decision is how will they custody their assets? And the answer is... it's. You don't really want the mayor of your city to have all your money no, and then leave. <laughs> like, does the mayor get to keep all the money when they get unelected? Like, would you be more comfortable? I mean, the point really is, no. And now, do you want to live in a city that doesn't own any Bitcoin? No. <laughs> Let's say you live in a country, they don't own any Bitcoin, but they have all their wealth and gold. And then, you're, and then the people living across the border decide to come and murder you all to take your gold. Were you better off that the country didn't own Bitcoin and they had gold and that way you didn't have this issue? I mean, yeah. the truth of the matter is you're better off to live in a country that has all their money in Bitcoin so that your enemy doesn't cross the border and murder you. Yeah. So when the country owns the Bitcoin, how will they custody the Bitcoin? Well, when you actually implement multi-sig with seven guardians, that's called a bank, a national bank. You know, and now you'll have this political process of who are the seven guardians you trust. Yeah. And what your jurisdictions are they in? Which like, is, uh, well, you know, families have politics, right? You have a yeah. distributed family and there's five brothers and there's, and the question is, which of the five brothers get to control the family money? If you don't have any yeah. money, you're lucky you don't have a problem. But when you actually right. inherit a lot of money from dad and there's five brothers, are three of the five brothers the ones with keys or all, what if one of them's an alcoholic drug addict? Does that guy get the keys? <laughs> I would vouch for the older brother since like I'm a, the older brother. <laughs> you know, everybody ends up having to deal with the issue. Yeah. And there's an, and and I don't think there's one simple answer, which is why I don't preach one answer, because no. the answer is different for a city mm. than a company, than a family, than an individual. No. Okay, like you're engaged to the woman. Do you share the keys? You're married to the woman. Do you share the keys? You have 16 kids. Which of your kids get the keys? I mean, how long do you have to be married before you share the keys? Yeah. Right? I mean, so that these are all interesting questions and there's no answer. I don't opine on it. 
what I think is digital property is good and digital digital property is better than physical property and and bitcoin solves half the problems in the world but not the other half right there's so the other half are still there you yeah, have yeah. to you know bitcoin won't solve the problem of how you have a happy marriage or how no, no, you no. know or politics or how you deal with issues with your kids in school that teaches them stuff you don't no, want yeah. them to learn all that stuff you still have to struggle with what bitcoin does is it disincentivizes physical violence and uh, physical power um, in order to seize and confiscate physical assets. And it incentivizes cooperation. And it, uh, it, in, it allows you to construct elegant and beautiful structures in cyberspace that, that uh, will be valuable to the human race. The price of Bitcoin climbed on Monday as financial institutions continued to give their Bitcoin blessing. Bitcoin rose more than 5% to $28,848, its highest level since early May, according to CoinMetrics. Ether added 3.5% to trade at $1,813. Sentiment has been high in crypto since late last week, when BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, filed an application for what would be the first ever spot Bitcoin ETF in the U.S., the application came a week after the Securities and Exchange Commission sued two of the biggest crypto exchanges, Binance and Coinbase. Many have speculated about the timing of BlackRock's move, particularly with Coinbase as its crypto custody partner. Then Tuesday morning, a new crypto exchange backed by financial giants Charles Schwab, Fidelity Digital Assets, and Citadel Securities announced that it has been life for several weeks trading Bitcoin and Ether. Fidelity has been actively following along with crypto developments since 2014. In more recent years, the firm has opened the Fidelity Digital Assets division, created a commission-free retail investing app called Fidelity Crypto, and began offering 401k investors access to cryptocurrencies, an option that needs to be made available by employers. Many financial incumbents are keen to show enthusiasm for blockchain technology and the ways it can advance old financial infrastructure. Most are quieter, however, about their views on crypto investing. With big names like BlackRock and Fidelity putting their crypto commitments on display, investors were optimistic Tuesday that some of the reputational risk of conducting any kind of crypto business, which for some investors has been a mental barrier to buying Bitcoin, could start to fade. Bitcoin has struggled to break out of a narrow trading range this quarter, but has yet to fall meaningfully under $25,000. Tuesday's big move pushed its monthly gains into the green. It's now up 69% this year. While this is very big news for Bitcoin and the crypto community, it is not certain that the ETF deal will go through, but the market remains optimistic. We hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to add your comments below and don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.